Behind me, the Powers Poblachen here in Warsaw. This is the home of Prince Joseph Poniatowski. His home, the place where he had his famous parties, also the war office. Who was Joseph Poniatowski? He was, in fact, a major figure in Polish history. Patriot, general, minister of war, sometime marshal of France. Join me in this episode of Poland Daily History, where we learn more about this remarkable Polish figure. So with the Battle of Leipzig, he, here we are, uh, Prince Poniatowski, a marshal of the French Empire, the Battle of Leipzig, um, in the aftermath of which he was effectively, he, he died. Uh, he, he died. He was, he was wounded several times uh, that day. Um, he received uh, uh, four shots. Uh, I mean, it was, it was counted because... I mean, you have wounds when, when his body was found in the Elster. Because he drowned in the Elster. He, 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 ju he jumped on the... He, 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 was, he was probably uh, uh, mortally wounded at that time. Yes. And added to the fact that, uh, he, 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 uh, that, that, that he was weakened, um, he, he drowned very quickly. But he refused to um, give, up the, give up the place, give up the battle. So he, Unlike the Bavarians who Traded Napole Na 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 Napoleon uh, in that very battle. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So at, at that point, so he he sort of died. A, I suppose he, for a soldier, he died a hero's death on the battlefield. For him, it was. I say that for him, in a sense, it was good that he died at that time. I mean, because uh, uh, he, he didn't have to uh, uh, decide uh, in the in the aftermath whether to be loyal to the Russians, what to do. I mean, no problems of that type. And if we just because sort of some of, some of some of the Napoleonic many of them some many of the Napoleonic generals officers uh, started a military service in the Russian army. I mean, they are not to be blamed completely because if you are a soldier, that's your profession. I mean, what can well, you well, do? Exactly, and, and, and at that time, particularly, you know, the concept of mercenary armies hadn't died out. I mean, it, it was a slightly different approach to. Despite, despite the fact that the Polish army, uh, during um, uh, the uh, so-called um, constitutional period, 1815-1830, so till the uh, November uprising, it's called the constitutional period because the constitution was, uh, was followed, was obeyed by the, by the uh, of, of course, with uh, some exceptions, but generally the constitution was in, 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 in force. So we call this period the Constitution of in, in that time, the Polish army was called the Polish army. Yes, so that's many, interesting. So, uh, so it, it, it wasn't just the Polish corps of the Russian army, but it, it was the, the name was uh, preserved. And in fact, the, that was the only the, the, the only the only aspect of the uh, Polish political life during the uh, Duchy of Warsaw wh wh when where the name uh, Poland was used. That was the the Polish army, Wojsko Polskie, Księstwo Warszawskie. No, no. No uh, allusion uh, to, 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 to Poland, uh, because uh, some say that Napoleon didn't want to infuriate uh, the Tsar to, to, to use the name Poland, and that's why he chose uh, Duchy of Warsaw, which historically doesn't, doesn't have any sense. There was no, no, no such no, thing no. as Duchy of Warsaw. No, never, never. <laughs> purely, well, of course, at that time, Napoleon did sort of go around creating a few sort of states which had had no sort of historical basis. 
and, and normally you know, putting members of his family in charge, which had limited success. But I was just wondering, you know, now we've reached this point, the, mm -hmm. the death of, of Poniatowski, as a historian, I mean, how would you sum up uh, Poniatowski's sort of life and contribution to sort of Poland and Polish history and uh, understanding of Poland? To me, uh, Pola, uh, Prince Joseph is the central figure of the Polish 19th century, uh, but uh, not the 19th century taken literally, 18, uh, mm. 1800, uh, but the, 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 the so-called Polish 19th century, so the time of partitions, uh, because he represents um, the uh, pro-Western option of, uh, uh, of our uh, uh, political dreams. Uh, and he represents um, you know, those, those values who are uh, dear to, to Poles, po Poles who are a nation uh, which um, was born uh, in a constant struggle against Russians, Turks, Swedes. I mean, of course, yeah. Uh, it, it's not, I mean, uh, uh, we are not a Protestant nation for which such values as you know uh, um, industry um, merchandise are important for us. Uh, it's on, spirit, and it's spirit and honor, a, a which are important. You know, I think it's probably just worth mentioning that the order, which is still the highest order of, of Polish awards today, the Virtuti Militari, was in fact instigated, and the first recipients were Poniatowski, Poniatowski and, 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 and Kosciuszko. I mean, that's mm -hmm. quite interesting. That, so he embodied this military spirit. Exactly. A very, very good point. Yeah, we didn't mention the, the Virtuti Militari, the oldest military, uh, the, 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 the Polish oldest military award. And, 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 and the most prominent one, of course, and the, and, and the most prestigious. I mean, there were guys who didn't deserve that. Brezhnev, for example, didn't deserve Virtuti well, Militari. We, we, I think every uh, every, <laughs> day, I mean, every day, once you allow politicians to start doling out honours, you get all sorts of... You know, I mean, our, our own Queen at one point was, was forced to, to bestow an honour on Ceausescu, which, you know, was hastily, hastily well, revoked once he was dead, which rather, you know, that's um, a different thing. And of course, we have this marvellous, it's a reproduction, we have this marvellous statue of Prince Joseph Poniatowski here in the Senate, yeah, mm -hmm. outside the presidential palace. So but the, but that, that's not the original place. No, it was, know? yes, it was the original place in front of the Saxon palace. Which is now absent. <laughs> which is now absent, as, as is the whole palace, of course, yes. But it's a marvellous, it's one of these great, you know, typical, he looks like monument. He looks like a Roman leader. Exactly, with his Roman warrior, with his, his hand outstretched, with pointing his, out. Yes, yeah. with his sword on this magnificent pointing horse. out the direction where to go. Exactly, it's also very symbolic. And uh, there it is here today in modern Poland, outside the president's palace. This is the historical figure, actually, yeah. we're greeted with uh, Joseph Poniatowski. Yeah, it is important. If, if somebody. If somebody's uh, statue stands in front of the presidential palace, it means that <laughs> they are important for, uh, for our um, Polish uh, history. Uh, uh, for exactly, our... and, it's just, it's and it just underlines your point about him being in the, in the 19th century, this sort of symbol, this, this Polish figure uh, whom everybody remembers. But I think that's actually a marvelous point at which to, to end, to think, well, here we are. Even today, he is and with funny us. Funny thing, funny thing. Uh, 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 for Poles, for many years, the one who represented the Napoleonic period in Poland wasn't Napoleon himself. Napoleon is less interesting for Poles than Prince Joseph. Of course. The first uh, uh, real academic biography of Napoleon in Polish was written in the 60s, 70s.